ladies and gentlemen, you're here. We're here. There's no turning back now. So put your hands together and welcome the host of 44 Charlton Street, Julian Fleischer. Come with me and we'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling in a world of our creation. What we'll see will defy expectation. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it, you want to save the world, best get to it. Uh, there is no life I know to compare with your imagination. Live in there if you truly. Okay, I'm done with the scatting. I bored myself, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. My name is Julian Fleischer. I am your host. I'm so delighted to see you all. So beautiful, so handsome and sexy. You're the best looking audience I have ever seen. And I'm not kidding, actually. And I've seen a lot of them. So welcome and thank you for being here. I'm so happy to see all your smiling faces. Oh God, we got through February, everybody. We did it. Holy shit, that was a hard one. And you know what? We're gonna get through March too. I'm here to tell you we're gonna get through March. We're gonna go one day at a time. We are gonna white knuckle it day by day, but we are gonna get through this month. And then we hit April, which we all know is the cruelest month. But the good news is after that comes May. And then we're gonna be fine, okay? You with me? <laughs> we just gotta get to May. And once a month, we stop by here at 44 Charlton to refill our tanks, to remind ourselves what it means to be human, what it means to be alive, what it means to sing and watch other people sing and watch this fucker try to talk and play at the same time. I can, I can do it. I, I, no, you can't. Been, no, you can't. I've been, tell I've me been, your name. I've What's been, your name? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we done this? this you were supposed to go home and practice. Shtick? But then, but then what shtick would we replace yeah, it yeah, with? Yeah, I don't know. We do the same shtick every month, and these people keep coming back. How many of it's you are return customers? Look at that! Come on! Whoa! We must be doing something right. Apparently, the 25 people who know about the show really enjoy it. What we have to do is let everybody else know. So throughout the evening, please feel free to take out your phones, make out with your neighbor, I don't know, but just transmit the information somehow to another person that we're here on the first Friday of every month. Now we have an epic show. As, uh, as Jennifer, my boss and a hype woman told you, we're gonna be skipping the game because we just got too much raw talent to present. So let me not get in the way of what is inevitable and beautiful and it's going to lift you up and serve you for the next 31 days? 30 days as if never able to remember. Yes, 31 days, how's that? I did it ladies and gentlemen, I'm just talking. I can just keep talking and it'll come out in weird sentences. So, 
Finally, let me just say thanks again for coming. Please tell your friends about us and prepare for a wonderful evening of beautiful music. We're going to take it from the bridge when I say one, two, three. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it, you want to change the world, there's nothing to it. Imagination, living there, you'll be free if you truly wanna be. And I want to be free. Who wants to be free with me? Yeah, free. Oh, I wanna be free. Charles Helms, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's so cute. I love you. So, what's going to happen now, just to sort of, you know, what? It's still happening? What? Well, I don't know. Well, can I just hold it in my hand? I'm going to hold it in my hand. Okay, thanks for telling me that. Um, that's Eileen Delahunte, our fabulous director. She just told me to speed it up. So listen, here's how it's going to work. We're gonna set the stage here, the big one, and to distract you from what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna take an audience member back to my Uncle Julian's chamber of chat and cocktails. So I just need someone who wants to chit chat. Oh, wow, you were ready to go. Come on up here. I like a man who is ready to go. Grab this microphone from this handsome fella. Thank you. And join me in my little chamber of chat. Test, test. Did I do that whole song with like a thing hanging out my ass? Okay. Sit down. What's your name, you handsome guy? <clears throat> My name's Tony. Hello. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. Um, have you been to our show before? Just once. Really? And did you enjoy it? I guess you must have. You've come back. I'm disappointed there's not a game tonight, though, because the game last time was Taylor Swift. Um, who said it? Taylor Swift or a dictator? <laughs> <laughs> and what's the difference, really? Right. Did you play that game? I can't I didn't remember. play, but I thought this is insane how some of them you're, you can't really tell. You feel um, very natural on stage to me, Tony. Why is that? Have you spent time in show business? I usually work behind the scenes, Julian. Will you um, tell me about what you do then? Though I was in... Uh, I, I'm a filmmaker these days. Though I w oh, you though make films? I do make films, yes. Well, so tell us just a little bit. About, your name is Tony. What's your last name? Tony Oso. O-S-S-O. This is just a new segment we do on the show where I just grab a random fella or fella out of the audience. <laughs> And I invite them on the stage to talk to me just a little bit about their lives. We're in New York, and the beautiful thing about New York is New Yorkers. Are you from New York? I grew up in New Jersey. Oh, shit. <laughs> I fucked but it I'm, up. But I'm, I'm a virtual New Yorker from college on. And New Jersey really is New York. It's just basically in some it, ways. an annex, really. Yeah. Come on, because you guys wouldn't do much without us here. What do you do? Uh, you're a filmmaker. I'm just pouring you a bourbon like you're going to drink it. I will. Okay, good. So go on. You make films. I, I'm a filmmaker, primarily documentaries. I work in production as are well. Are you single? Currently single. You are? Are you looking for somebody? That's really what interests me. <laughs> are you single? Are you looking for somebody? <laughs> Talk to me. I'm single. I'm... I, I could be looking for some. I'm not looking actively, but I'm open to the possibility. I don't really believe in looking. Oh, interesting. I believe in discovering in being or be, right. being found, being discovered. Uh, well, who here in the room is single? I'm going to just, just let's make this happen. Um, okay, you're single, you're single. All right, so oh, look around, track these people. Um, Am I being set up in publicly? You're damn right you're being set up. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the distraction is over. Let's say thank you to Tony Oso for spending these notes. Sit, sit, sit. I want you to enjoy your bourbon. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read our official introduction about this next act, and then I'm going to tell you some more personal stuff. The New York City Labor Chorus, with 75 members representing over 20 labor unions and district councils, was founded in 1991. That's right. Go ahead. Let her rip. Let her rip. Don't be polite. The chorus promotes... I'm going to stand up for this. The chorus promotes union solidarity by expressing through song the history and ongoing struggles... I'm giving myself chills of workers for economic and social justice and their dynamic repertoire combines the power and culture of union music with the great gospel, jazz, and classical and folk traditions. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm a proud member myself of three different unions. One of them governs my contract right here at WNYC. I am extremely happy. I've tried for a year to get you guys here. You're finally here. My heart is full. I ask you all to give a very warm 44 Charlton welcome to the New York City Labor Chorus.
York City Labor Chorus, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for these beautiful people. Oh my gosh. Come join me. I want to give you this. And then will you join me as well and uh, grab this microphone? Tell me your name. I am Jana Ballard. Hi, Jana. And tell Hi. me your name. Barbara Bailey. Hi, Barbara. So, Jana, you're the music director. I am. And, Barbara, you are the... Co-founder. You founded this group of singers. Co-founder. Co-founder. With whom? <laughs> Bobby Rabinowitz and Laura... Uh, Friedman, thank you. A couple of Jews, Schwartz. that sounds nice. <laughs> um, but that's New York, am I right? Yes. I yes. have to tell you, I have really, as you know, I've tried for a long time to get you guys here. I, I found out about you through my friend Reggie Moore, who's a friend of yours, Betty's. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much for sticking with me and, and finding a time to bring you here because I think right now, at this moment in history, we need you more than ever. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. We feel that way too. But I don't want to talk. I want to. I want to hear you talk. Tell me about the impulse to to form the group. Well, it was uh, 1990, and the the uh, unions were not being recognized. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Rabinowitz went to her uh, president of her union and stated that, that she would like to start a, a chorus, and. Uh, it was, you know, not, well, frowned upon because they felt it was not important. But she brought out the fact that uh, mm. the songs that we sing and the people that we are going to touch uh, were important and we had to get the word out. And uh, like Pete Seeger, who was our benefactor almost for a while, he, ha he encouraged us to c continue to fight and get the chorus going. And uh, we did and uh, educate the new working uh, members that were coming uh, into the different unions uh, about what union, um, unionism is about and why it was necessary to uh, bring the, uh, all the workers together and through song. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you did that. You know, I, I spend my whole life, whether I'm singing or, or talking about songs upstairs, like believing in the healing power of songs, in the power of them to bring us together and to teach one another and to pass on the, the crucial DNA of who we are to the next generation. And when you mix it with the strong, uh, you know, sort of uh, righteous Ness of unionness. Yeah. I mean, for um, forgive me, I'm not you know practiced in this language, but I know what I'm feeling in my heart, and it is uh, proud to be a part of this community, if not a part of this chorus. And so I'm really grateful that you're all here, and I think I'm going to ask you to sing one more song. Yes. Thank do you, you mind? Yes. We do not. Thank you. And is it okay if we clap along and stuff? Absolutely. Please right. sing with us. All right, great. So thank you for coming. I'm going to kiss you on the cheek. Song, Are you ready? Do I have your consent? <laughs> We have your consent. Sure. Thank you all so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the New York City Labor Chorus. When the union's inspiration do the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater.
They are carrying our torch. Thank you all so very much. Thank you very much to New York City Labor Chorus. You can follow them at nyccl. Oh, I'm sorry, lc.org. My goodness. Whew. What a good way to open a show. The best opening of a show is a number that would be a good closing. And that was that, ladies and gentlemen. Whew. All right, I'm ready. I feel good. My blood is pumping and I feel well represented. Come on, it's okay. Tuck it in, tuck it in. <laughs> um, so, you know, what we do here at 44 Charlton, everyone, is... Yeah, keep clapping. Clap them off stage. Watch that last step. It's a doozy. There you go. Nice. They'll be back for our sing-along at the end of the show, so don't you worry. What we do here at the show, of course, is try to remind ourselves what makes New York great by representing New York artists, New York performers, New York creative talent. But it's not just uh, the people on stage who make this city what it is, and frankly, I would argue, continues to be. So we like to reach out occasionally to our partners in the creative community and invite some of those folks from behind the scenes to help us stage the next act. And I don't know anybody who could represent um, the, uh, the dirty n nether regions of New York's nightlife better than my next guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Daniel Nardiccio. Come on up here, you. Come on, come on. Yeah, there you go. They were such a great opening act Aren't for they me. the best? They were all great Are you going to have them at your club? Are you going to come with me? Come Here's here. Butterball. It's, it's Mardi Gras. Come here, Butterball. Butterball it's Mardi Gras. Small. And what a better way to celebrate, celebrate Mardi Gras is... Butterball in her little Mardi Gras scarf. Oh. We were there last week. She got her hair did. Really? You are running the show all of a sudden. Sorry. I feel like you're just talking Sorry. and I'm standing here. I was just no, entertaining. Why don't you just go? Just do it. Just I was just it. entertaining. Just sit down. Well, I can't now. Oh, look at <laughs> Butterball. I'll st can I stand here? Here we go. Oh, my God. She really commands the stage. She really does. It's okay, though. Oh. <laughs> And there we have it, right, uh, Butterball? I know who Literally, she got this done. It's purple, green, and gold in New Orleans. Oh, that's right. Now you live in New Orleans. Part time, yeah. Okay. Listen, I would love to have a long discursion. I know we got to move it along. Forth. We are already running late, and we don't we even have, have a game tonight. So, I want to ask. I don't get you, four songs. Sorry, babe. <laughs> are you kidding? Did you hear that? They were great. I'm I am ready to like live the next six totally, months. Totally. No. Life. I, who doesn't love a choir? Who doesn't love a union choir? Oh, that's true. Totally. Totally. I'm talking about until union. they unionize, and then you're like, oh, I gotta pay them more. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But I gotta tell you, when I first Just onboarded kidding. here, you know, the HR department tried to fuck me, and I got the union involved, and they saved my ass, and now I have health care because of my fucking union. Thank you very much. I yeah, love a good union. I know, you're like, oh, WMYC, lefty, you know, progressive, blah, blah, blah. They will fuck you. I love them, though. I really love do. Love a good union. So happy to be here. No, actually, the green space is not a union space, so let's let them off the hook. The green space is the coolest place to work. This is great. Daniel, this is great. Yeah. shut up. So, I just what, said it was great. where do you work? Uh, well, I work for myself, but I own Club Coming with Alan Cumming. Yes. Yes. A terrific East Village nightclub that has essentially single-handedly re relit the, the torch of creative freedom in East I think Village. so. Oh, my God, man. The East Village, yeah. 
it's like all of a sudden it's 1991 again and we're having a good yeah. time. They were selling a house down the street and they said, and you're only one block from Club Coming and Alan sends it to me and he goes, we're an asset now in the neighborhood. You are. Big yeah, asset. Kind of exciting. Big asset. Oh, she's asleep. Okay, listen. We, that's, she means we got to keep it moving. Um, I, no, I'm very happy. Eileen, the director from behind the glass, yeah, she, she was, was good. shouting like crazy. All right, I can make this fast. Yeah. So I, uh, what I did was I asked you, because you have entertainment every night in the fabulous Club right. Coming on East 6th Street in New York. Go yeah, there. Totally. It's a safe space for every kind of person you can imagine. Uh, and I thought, do you have someone you'd like to present here on our show? A few months ago, Alan said to me, oh, Daniel, let's have some magic. I didn't do that. I Scottish accent very well. But it was like, I usually do it pretty well. And he was like, I would love to have some magic. So I put it on Facebook and put the word out to all the people I knew. And this guy reached out to me. He's so fantastic that the first time I met him, he's so cute, too. I said, can you read my mind? He goes, you want to F me? I said, God, he's good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so he's here tonight. Oh, man, you took my and line. And I love him. <laughs> His name is Jason Saran, and, and he's a mentalist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's not waste another minute. With the help of Daniel Nardiccio from Bedlam and from Club Coming, one of New York's really, truly great nightlife impresarios, you look like a million bucks. I'm so glad to have you here. Thanks Thank so you much. for joining me. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jason Saran. Thank you. Awesome. You are correct. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Serena, and as Daniel mentioned, I'm what they call a mentalist, which basically means folks pay me to pretend to know everything about them. <laughs> which is awkward because I can't do it. Because um, I'm not a psychic. I don't claim to be one. I'm not a psychic. I can't just look you up and down and instantly know all your weird dirk dirty secrets. You I can, because obviously. But most people, <laughs> that's rather difficult. So what I do instead is I make guesses. Every day I meet people and I make guesses, assumptions about how they think, how they act. And uh, believe it or not, I already have a guess made about someone in this room. <gasps> Gasp! <laughs> but first you guys have to make a guess about me. And it can't just be that I'm Jewish, because that's too obvious. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. Uh, I'm going to point to it. Actually, let's start simple. Everybody look at me very quickly. This is just a little warm up. If it doesn't work with you, that's OK. It just means I'm going to ignore you for the rest of the night. Uh, very quickly, think of a verb. Everyone think of a verb right now. And it's not in the title club coming. So think of a verb right now. <laughs> Raise your hand if you thought the word run. Put those hands up. OK, quite a few of you. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to call on a few people who have their hands up. Uh, you missing the green shirt with the dark lipstick. Uh, could you stand up for me? Excellent. Put those hands back up. Put those hands back up. Uh, you, sir, in, in that lovely sweater, stand up. And then you, miss right here in the center. Would you stand up as well? Uh, you give all three of them a round of applause. You can stay right where you are, but stay standing. <laughs> Just wonderful. So, so you, uh, you all thought the word run, which means that you are, are suitable for this next exercise. We're going to go a little more specific, a little more difficult. I'm going to write down a number now between 1 and 100. And you three are going to try to guess the number. For the record, I have not met any of you before. I have not talked to you before the show in any way, shape, or form. Uh, let's get started. Here we go. I'm going to write down a number between 1 and 100. I'm going to give this very trustworthy looking person this pen. Uh, and we'll get started here. Uh, who wants to guess my number first? Let's see. How about you, sir, in the sweater? Between 1 and 100. Yes, nice and loud. Three. three. You, OK, good. Three. <laughs> You had all the options in the world, and you were like, three. Uh, how about you, miss, with the dark lipstick? Seven. Seven. All right, so guess far away from each other. What about you, miss, between one and 100? 24. 20 what? Four. Fortunately, none of you are right. Um, one of you was pretty close, though. Can you read that number nice and loud? That's nine, correct? Nine. Yes, nine. Which means, who was the closest? Seven. You were. Excellent. So you two can sit down. You were, we didn't set this up. You really thought the word run randomly, and then you really did think uh, the closest number to mine. Do you know what that phenomenon is called? A coincidence. Volunteering. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Get up on stage, please. <laughs> Wonderful. That's for you. Take that, please. Yes, yes, yes. Stand right there in the center of the stage. Oh, you're, 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 yeah, it's perfect. Um, could you do me a favor? Open it. You, you, you really were the perfect one for this. Um, how much were you off by? My number was nine, you said? Two. You were off by I said seven, so off by two. That's right. Could you open the uh, envelope and just very slowly read it line by line? This was the first guess that I had of the night. Uh, nice and loud. Just what does that say? The person closest to my number will be the person Nailed it. with long brown hair and blonde tips 
in black boots and dark lipstick, but the most important thing is that she will be off by two. Give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. You did so lovely. Thank you. You can keep it. You get to keep it. The most disappointing gift. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, before we move on, before we move on, I'm going to do something psychics love to do. Uh, could everyone in this room please uh, really do this now? Think of someone you miss. Doesn't have to be anyone who's passed away, nothing too sad, but just someone you miss. Think of that name in your mind and lock it in right now for me. Now, I I I've told you I'm not personally a psychic. Uh, I, I don't expect you to think that I'm even Sherlock Holmes. Right? I can't just look people up and down and, and know from the stain on their sleeve cuff that they're having an affair. <laughs> Although I did just see two people check their sleeves. <laughs> What I can do, and what I'm fairly good at, is making people feel like I know them better than I really do. And there's a few different techniques, a few different skills that psychics and mediums and seers have used all throughout the ages, thousands of years, that help do that. Uh, for example, I asked all of you to think of somebody you miss. Uh, one of those techniques is called shotgunning. Shotgunning is as old as time. Basically, you get a big room of people just like this, and you make a guess that you know is going to apply to at least a few of the people in the room, and then you let them identify themselves. It makes you look very psychic. For example, I know in a room of about 84 people, when I say, think of someone you miss, there's usually five people who think of a pet. So if you are thinking of a pet, please stand up right now. That's one, two, and three. And now I look a little psychic. <laughs> the second technique, um, this is something that you see mediums do all the time. It's called uh, cold reading. Basically, you throw information at someone, and you let them just sort of communicate to you, maybe verbally, maybe not verbally, what is correct. So if I was a medium, and I'm not, but if I was a medium, I, I'd probably do something like this. <laughs> Oh yes, oh yes, I'm getting a message from, you'll notice this medium's from Long Island. Oh yes, I'm getting a message from the spirits. I'm getting a message for the spirits and this message is for someone over here. I believe it's for you, sir. You're thinking of a pet, correct? Yes. I believe this is a dog, is that correct? No. What is it, a cat? Yes. I knew it, right? <laughs> it's easy. Right? And I'm getting another message, I'm getting another message from the cat. She's, she, it's a she? It's a she, correct? No. It was a he, correct? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> He's saying he's sorry about the scratches. I don't know what that means. He says, you will understand the message. And I'm getting a letter, the first letter of this cat's name. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. That first letter is a P. Is that correct? No. No, that's right. Sometimes they come in upside down. That's a B. Is that correct? No. That's a, that's a T. Is that correct? No. A J. No. No? What was it? T. T. I said T. That was my third guess. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, though. It's a T. And even though you can see that I'm just pulling this out of my ass, the fact that I get that one little bit right makes everyone in the room, even if you are a skeptic, just a little bit more likely to believe whatever the hell it is I do next. Focus on the name, focus on the name, focus on the name. Say it in your head over and over. The name of that pet like it's on the tip of your tongue. Focus on the first letter. The first letter, that's an F. Is that correct? Good. Look at me. Focus on the first letter of that name. That's a, um, an, an R. Is that correct? Yeah. Focus on the whole name. This is a strange name. This is a German name. Is that correct? Say the names in your head over and over, shouting them at me louder and louder till you're just saying, that's Reese Fritz, and I believe that's TC. Is that correct? Yep. Sit down, please. <laughs> is that correct? Is that correct, miss? <laughs> Wonderful. You can take a seat. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> One more there. People always ask me if. People always ask me if, as I do this, do I ever start to wonder, do I ever start to feel like maybe I really do have a gift? Maybe I really am a little bit psychic? And the answer is all the time. Because <laughs> it's, so e it's so easy to want to believe in this sort of thing. It's so easy to get sucked into the fiction of it, even if you're the one doing it. It's so common, we have a term for it in the industry, we call that a shut-eye. A shut-eye is a psychic that drinks a little bit too much of their own psychic Kool-Aid. <laughs> and it's a fascinating thing to watch two people turn themselves into believers when they start as skeptics. It's so I interesting to watch. I'd like to do it to two people tonight. Uh, I'm going to bring two people up here, two people who I have never met before. Uh, let's see, what's your name? Wesley. 
Wesley, would you join me? Is that all right? Sure, yeah. Excellent. Give Wesley a round of applause. Wesley, stand right over here. And one more person. Let's see. Somebody from the other side of the room. What's your name, sir? Yes, you. Yes. Andrew. Andrew, would you come up? Give Andrew a round of applause as well. Wesley, wonderful. Stand right over here for me. Face that way. Same thing. Step right over here for me. Face this way. You're doing, you look more nervous than Wesley, but that's okay. This is good. Take a deep breath in, just relax, you're gonna to be totally safe. My job is to turn you two into believers tonight, to convince you that you can read minds too. In order to do this, I have to make three requests. The first request, from the moment I ask you to close your eyes, you keep them closed until I explicitly tell you to open them. Is that all right with you? Is that all right with you? All right. Second request, is it okay if I touch you both a bit? No word tawdry, just the shoulders and up. Is that all right with you? All right, fantastic. And third and final request, can you both believe? Can you both believe in your own psychic ability just for the next few minutes? Is that all right? Give it a shot. Wonderful. Uh, do me a favor. I'm going to have you just stand just like this. Perfect. And I'm going to have you stand just like this. Perfect. A little forward. And take a deep breath in for me, Wesley. Just like that. Let it out. Follow my fingers wherever they go. Just wherever they go, follow them. <laughs> Feeling nice and relaxed as my fingers go up, your eyes get heavy. As my fingers go up, your eyes get heavy. And slowly they close. You relax into this nice state. And you stay just like that. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> Relax your arms to the side, please. Relax your arms to the side. I'm going to count from 10 to 0. And as I do, I want you both to just become aware of everything you feel, everything you experience. Keep a journal in your head, where you feel it, how many times you feel it, as I count from 10 to 0. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Same thing, take a deep breath in, let it out. For our first test, raise your hand if you felt me touch you. <laughs> Lower your hand. We'll do a second question just to be sure. Show me with your fingers how many times you felt me touch you, please. Lower your hand. We'll do a third question just to be absolutely positive. Could you both just uh, reach across the front of your body and touch the last spot you felt me touch you? Reach across the front if you could. Oh, wonderful. You can lower your hands. You're doing such a good job. Lower your hands. Take a deep breath in, letting it out. Same thing, please. A deep breath in, letting it out. And I've got one last question for both of you. Could you touch the spot you last felt something touch you? I'm going to count from 0 to 10. You're going to open your eyes to the loudest applause this room has ever heard. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, you two don't know why that was interesting, but they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you. Uh, remind everyone your name. Wesley. And yours, sir? Andrew. On the count of three, could everybody shout, who was I touching the entire time, Wesley or Andrew? Wesley. <laughs> Did I ever touch Andrew at all? No. Andrew, at the very end, you said you felt something on your nose. Yeah. What did it feel like, if you had to guess? It felt like almost like a piece of floss going down my nose. Yeah, like maybe the very strands oh, of a feather. <laughs> <laughs> I was tickling his nose. It didn't go near you, which means you did a lovely job, sir, and you have lost your mind. Thank you very, very much. My name is Jason Saran. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. Jason Saran, ladies and gentlemen. Come on over here, man. Thank you so much. Take that chair. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Come on up here, you. Oh, yes. A hug from your showbiz daddy. Grab that. My showbiz daddy. <laughs> Who told you my pet name for him? <laughs> Everybody's pet he name for him is showbiz daddy. Yes, yes, yes. Jason, that's crazy. You know, Wesley happens to be my former assistant. So that's why I was laughing so hard, because oh. I watched him try to sort my mail for about 18 months. Yeah. And it was a total disaster. Sure. So to see him so compliant. <laughs> really was a surprise for me. Magic touch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, what the fuck just happened? That's crazy. I have no idea. So tell me just a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from a small, not small, but a suburb of Chicago called Skokie, Illinois. Oh, Skokie. That's right. That's where the Nazis march. Remember That's right. That? At the AFL-CIO. Uh, That's right. Uh, they and and uh, it, we're the plot twist. We're the final plot twist in The Usual Suspects. So we have the Nazis and Kevin Spacey. Right, and you worked now, out great. You know, there's a, a terrific <laughs> trio. 
And where can we find you around town? What's your, I mean, how does a person like you, I mean, in spite of your obvious gifts, make an actual living doing what you do? Well, uh, I, I'm lucky enough that sort of the people who want to see me perform seem to know how to get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> I do private events. You have a Twitter uh, hashtag that helps. I have an Instagram hashtag. Oh, I'm Instagram. off the Twitter. I'm off the Twitter. Jason but I have an Instagram Saran hashtag. At, okay, that's your... At that's Jason your, Saran. Your, yes, yes, yes. Why did you get off Twitter? I, I think it's just... I think it brings out the worst in, in, in people. I just didn't... I didn't have an interest in it. Right. I think Instagram's nice because you can share art, you can share, you know, uh, images, and I think that's wonderful. But I have, you know, if people want to talk to me, they can send me an email. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how Twitter. Do they really have works. to? Can't they just send you a thought? That would be better. Yeah. Can I send you a thought right now? Absolutely. You want to tell me what it is? Anal. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he's good, right? <laughs> wow. Nicely done, man. Uh, so when is, when, when is your next gig? When is the next chance people have a chance to follow you? Uh, so most of what I do is sort of private events, but my next show that's open to the public is uh, uh, the, the final Wednesday of March, and I seem to be blanking on the actual date, ironically enough. Uh, I per do a show called The you Other know, Side. You you're a mentalist. You can't yeah. like, draw up a fucking Yeah, calendar. but I suck at dates. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> <laughs> I need a Wesley <laughs> to, to handle it. But he sucks at dates, too, so... <laughs> Um, I, I do a show called The Other Side, and it's a recreation of a Victorian seance. Ooh. So I sort of deconstruct how seances were done, and I try to bring that back to life a little bit while explaining uh, the methods and the history that went into all that. Is any of this stuff really happening? Uh, I, my answer is I've never, and I've researched it quite a bit because it's something I'm deeply fascinated by, I've never encountered anything I couldn't explain other ways and replicate. That doesn't mean there isn't someone out there that I've never heard of who has the, the real gift, but it, it does mean that when I, so far... So you are faking it. Oh, absolutely. I Excellent. always fake it. Oh, I like a person I always fake tells it. the truth. Yeah. Um, listen, Jason, it has been such a pleasure to uh, be here with you. I know we had something maybe going to happen between the two of us. You want me to try something? Well, I don't have it with me. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you asked me if I could guess something about you, and I said, uh, can I try to guess the name of the first person you ever kissed? So can I try to do that right now? Would that be all right? Oh, yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do. This is a little can bit you guess tricky. The name of the, yeah. the next person? Do me a favor. Uh, That's what I really want to know. <laughs> I'm getting a J. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Do me a favor. Uh, grab my wrist for me with this hand. Grab my wrist. Yeah, do it. I have consent, right? Yes, you have uh, blanket consent. WMYC, Squeeze tight. You never know. Squeeze tight. Focus on the first letter of this person's name. You remember the name of the first person you ever kissed? I certainly do. Focus on the first letter of that person's name. I'm uh, focusing like crazy. All right, focus Hurry on up, the second go. letter. Focus on the second letter. Uh, the third letter. Uh, fourth letter. Yeah. Fifth letter. You just stopped. It's a four-letter name. Is that correct? You're correct. Focus on the first letter. A, B, C. First letter is a B. Is that correct? You're a bitch. Look at me. Say it in your head over You're and over till you're oh. just shouting. <laughs> I'm a bitch, but this was Beth, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you very much. Whoa! Jason Zaran, thank you so much. And thank you to Daniel Nardiccio of Club Coming for bringing Jason to 44 Charlton. Thank you so much. I appreciate both of you. Uh, you can go. You're done. Thanks. So this next performer is, uh, is in fact, a personal friend. But so that I don't do them any disservice, I will read from the card all of the detailed <laughs> descriptions because I, I just want to I want to show respect. This person is a Brooklyn-based performer, musician, writer, creator of live performance works. I can sign off on that. They frequently play Joe's Pub at the Public Theater. Their shows have toured nationally and internationally, and you can catch them this season on HBO's High Maintenance and True TV's At Home with Amy Sedaris. I think that was last night's episode. Catch their show entitled <laughs> Wet Food Tomorrow at Joe's Pub. Tomorrow night, sold out. Sorry, everybody. Along with the cast, which you will meet tonight, Emily Bate, Chenda Cope, Amelia Spooner, and Mike Markanowski, please welcome my friend, Aaron Markey. Yeah. So, um... I was in a production of Peter Pan last summer that I didn't enjoy um, because of Captain Hook. It was a classic life imitates art kind of situation. And much like Wendy, who never wanted to revisit Neverland after having been, 
at that moment, I thought that I never wanted to revisit a stage ever again in my life. I didn't want to perform anymore, period, end of story. A couple weeks pass after the show closes, and a friend of mine emails me. And she asks me if I want to create a short piece for her virtual reality video game that she's creating. The piece would be inside of like an open mic situation in the bowels of a ship that was at the bottom of an ocean. And I get why she thought of me for this. <laughs> it was a very good money and because I have not monetized any other skills outside of writing and performance, I found it very difficult to say no. So she gives me a deadline. And because I'm so anti-showbiz in this moment, I let it lapse. And then she admirably follows up. And she gives me another deadline, and I let it lapse, and so on and so forth, until as a punishment to myself for being unprofessional, I choose to write her an email on my birthday, which is the only day of the year that's wonderful for going to the beach and not writing emails. So in this email, I write that I have written a song about how much I hate my roommate's cats. And I provide a lot of details that are unconsciously about sabotaging this opportunity. And I make it implicitly clear that I haven't done any work at all on the song. And I press send, and I hope that I never hear from her about work again. Within 15 minutes, she sent me a draft of the animator's sketches of me as an avatar uh, from, drafted from my likeness on YouTube videos of yore, along with sketches of two backup singing and dancing cats, <laughs> the two that I live with. So I write the song. Trash Kid is the one who was there before me She's shy and she's clean and she's the color of a stormy night on the Hudson When the sky's so mean The raindrops fall like grenades into the sea But she likes eating wet food She likes eating wet food She likes eating wet food all day long Grown up eating dry food This many cans of wet food can't be wrong When I moved in it was a one cat town In a small apartment three is a crowd But Vicky's mommy was homeless living in the street So my roommate took Vicky, said, I know what she eats. What food, what food? That little kittens scratch and little kittens bite. Little kittens grow up to be cats overnight. When a cat bears its claws, that cat is the law. But Sheriff Vicky isn't picky about pricking skin She'll draw blood just to distract so she can get you again Tell the doctor to clear a room Cause I'm moving in Oh, she likes eating wet food She likes eating wet food She likes eating wet food 
My toothbrush and a nighty and I said adios You pick me or you pick Vicky but you can't have us both He said baby you do you But before you go Why not try this wet food You might like this wet food There's more than plenty wet food for us My pleasure. Is that all you're going to do? Well, I mean, all our other songs are like 12 minutes long. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, listen, um, thank you so much for coming and for delivering a beautiful song and beautiful visuals as well. These costumes mm -hmm. are beautiful. Who made them? Enver Shakartash. Say that again. Enver Shakartash. One more time. Enver Shakartash. Beautiful work. <laughs> no problem. Whoever you are. So, you know, I, I, when we spoke about your coming on the show a long time mm -hmm. ago, um, there was a sense that m you might need some, you know, maybe promotional, mm -hmm. you know, sort of mm -hmm. like assistance for the show, but it's completely sold out. I know. Wonderful, right? It I love it wonderful. when you don't have to do promo. Oh, my God. It feels so good. I haven't felt that in a super long it's time. It's like in a city of, what, 11 million people, you'd think you could get 188 to a show well, pretty fast, but it actually takes a long time. It really does. You've got to be out there churning it out every mm -hmm. goddamn day. It's like butter. Prairie times. <laughs> It's a long right. time to mash up that milk, right, turn it into butter. There you go, but you have done it. <laughs> yep. But here's an interesting little tidbit. A friend of mine tweeted me today when I was on the Crosstown bus on the way here because I ride the M8 from the East Village. Sure, got him. Yeah, and then I dropped myself off at the, at the one train, take it one stop down, and I'm here. It's the best ride in New York. Anyway, so we were, I was on the, the bus, and I get a tweet from a buddy of mine mm -hmm. who's also like me from Baltimore. It's, if I'm talking too much. What? No, 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 you're good. Are there Baltimoreans They're here? Raise those hands high. What? Where? Oh, that's right. You, of course, my friend. Where? What guy? Your other friend. Oh, Zach. Oh, my God, Zachary. Jesus Christ is over there. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> we actually, we grew up together. I didn't know he was here. Listen, Aaron. Yeah. So my friend uh, Andrew <laughs> says to me, I've got two tickets to Aaron Markey's sold out show. I cannot use them. Would you like to donate them tonight to the show? And I was like, hells yes. Andrew Krukoff, wherever you are, come up on stage, please, and bring those two printed tickets with you. Nice, warm, 44 Charlton round of applause mm. for this guy. For my friend Andrew. Where, where is Andrew? I don't know. He's taking a long time. Oh, okay. There he is. <laughs> Can you do some showbiz moving? Yeah, there you go. Put your mouth on that microphone. Yeah, look the at whole idea. That, no, okay. no, we're going to work this out. This Let, is the game show, honey. Yeah, Get into it. it. You're in it right now. <laughs> when I tweeted you, I did not think this was going to be this involved. Can we hear, <laughs> I just wanted to give can you we hear your Baltimore accent, please? Well, the thing is, I'm actually... 
<laughs> half hour south of Baltimore. Mm. Oh, it's it's a general worse. mid-Atlantic. It comes out with the O's when I say Yeah, phone there it home. is. That's the real there stuff. There it is. What yeah. we're about to do, ladies and gentlemen, is take a five-minute intermission, during which we're going to reset the stage. You're going to visit the bar and the photo booth in the lobby and take a minute or two to take some photos of the show, to tweet them, and to Instagram them, to let the world know that 44 Charlton is happening here every first Friday of the month. I know that it's humiliating, but I need your help. We need to let more people know this is happening. And during those five minutes, if you want those two tickets, attack him in a mob, that's and whoever... Not, that's not a prize. It is a prize. I guess attacking can be a prize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donald anyway, Trump. If you really want to see that show, if you want to see Aaron Markey's terrific show, this was just a tiny sample. Tomorrow night, there are no tickets. There are two right there in the hands of my friend, Andrew Krukoff. Come see him in the lobby, and he will decide who gets those tickets. <laughs> it's so I much easier this way, way than working mm -hmm. on... Will you play that piano, please? Because it's super, super quiet. There we go. All right, thank you. Aaron, do you have anything else you want to say to me? I love you. I love you, too. And I think you know that. Mm -hmm. And whatever happened a long time ago, I'm super sorry. I, I'm not as sorry as I am. <laughs> At this very minute. Are you going to punish me? Uh, no, it looks like you wanted too much. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Markey. Thank you so much. We're going to be back in five minutes with one more stupendous routine. This is Cody Owenstein.
That is Cody Owenstein and the 44 Charltones. Thank you so much. Aren't they lovely? How do they do it? Oh, somehow I feel like tonight we have finally achieved what we have always wanted to achieve here on 44 Charlton. That was good. That was good. We're going to talk about that. Um, thank you so much, Cody, for, for doing that for us. I'm just going to vamp a little while we clean up the line at the bar because I want to make sure that uh, everybody has a chance to sit back down before we close the show with one more remarkable performer. How's everybody doing? You feeling good? Hey -o. 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 That's all I got. That's all I got. Well, <laughs> now you want to talk? That was the weirdest call and response I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm just trying to vamp for time. Okay, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I have all the information on my card. I could read you this next performer's resume. Um, and I would like you to switch with this fella, if you don't mind. But here's the story. A long, long time ago in an East Village far, far away... My ex-boyfriend wrote a play, and it was at the New York Theatre Workshop. It was a beautiful production. And in it was uh, a, well, a number of extraordinary performers, including my next act. 
Um, I was hosting a little uh, like talent night once a week at a bar called Starlight. Yeah. yeah, right? Oh, there you go. Avenue A between 10th and 11th, long since disappeared, along with the rest of what was beautiful about the East Village. I live there, baby. I'm not sentimental about it. It's tough. It's hard. The sidewalk cafe closed this week, so, you know. That's right. One more nail in the coffin. That's fine. It's New York. It's how it goes. Sloughs off a skin, a new one comes up from underneath. So listen, I asked this person if she would be kind enough to come sing with me at my little Thursday night situation at Starlight, and she did, and it was very, very good. And then I said, well, would you come join me at Joe's Pub for my show there? She said, yes, and she did, and it was very, very good. And I said, well, listen, I'm also performing for eight weeks or something in L.A. at a nightclub. Would you like to be my partner out there? And she said, yes, and we did, and it was extremely good. Since then, she's gone on to star on Broadway. She's won Emmys on television. She makes movies. And she also happens to be one of the damn best singers I have ever heard in my life. Tomorrow night, she'll be singing at Lincoln Center's American Songbook. She's doing an evening of song called All the President's Man, where she matches up Amy Mann songs with some of the <laughs> most frightening presidencies you've ever imagined. So she really is one of the great people I've ever met. She has shown me nothing but love and support for a very long time. I'm very grateful and excited to introduce Miss Martha Plimpton. No, I, I, I just made that up. Hi. Oh, you wanna, let's lower. I brought my, I brought my equipment. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're doing good. Hear it for the New York City Labor co Chorus, right. who like totally like sent shivers up all of our spines, and I didn't know they existed, and now I'm glad they do because you know we should have them in every labor organ, every strike, we should have them everywhere. And we there's should... plenty of those to go around. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, buddy. They, they, mm. yeah. My kishkas are still. I know they're moving. Yeah. I mine too. They're <laughs> seized up. Yeah. So. Um, you have kindly uh, invited me to join you tomorrow night at Lincoln Center Songbook. Yes. Uh, for this evening, do you want to say anything about what it is you cooked up? Yeah, well, I think you did a beautiful job describing it. I know we're running long. Yes, it is all of Amy Mann's songs um, uh, and how they relate, in my mind, to specific United States presidents. I think Amy is an it's excellent natural. chronicler of the foibles and failures of the human uh, condition. Uh, and she does an excellent job of, of sort of dissecting the various toxic neuroses uh, that human beings Preach, um, Martha. that that human beings uh, have that that uh, destroy their lives. And this relates none more better uh, than to the Lee. leaders of the free world. More betterly. More, none more betterly. There you go. And I'm thrilled that you're going to be joining us, I'm and that we get to, to share a couple of the songs Can that we're going to be doing the, tomorrow the, night. The T-shirt you gave do, me for yes, tomorrow night do. my costume for tomorrow. That's right. Who's old enough to remember? There you go. Right. <laughs> and and my brilliant musical director, who's over here on the piano, Dan Lipton, who helped me conceive of the show and create the show and has arranged um, all of it. Yeah. Uh, we'll be there. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. So let's do it. You let's, ready? This is a little duet. This is our little and I'm duet. I'm going to leave you alone. No, 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 great. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do it. Do it. The king of the jailhouse and the queen of the road think sharing the burden will lighten. Alone. So they pack up the troubles in an old Cadillac that's her in the mirror asleep in the Something wrong with me Baby, there's something wrong with me Baby, there's something wrong with me I can't see That I can't see
and they don't give the answers at the end of the day. No, they don't, brother. So you can't simply stand there and hope for the best. It's a bad idea. So wake me up at the border When we reach Mexico I'll tell you a secret I don't even know Maybe the sun Thank you, Martha. I give you the stage. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julian, for having us. I'm gonna, let me just find the song because we, sometimes we add things at the last minute and, uh, and then you have to learn them then you didn't learn them in time. So I'm just finding the page with the <laughs> Just give me a minute. So um, I, what do you guys think of my outfit? Because um, while I'm searching for the, um, well, what, but right before I left the house, um, the UPS guy came, and uh, you know I, I, you know I didn't spend a ton of time, but you know I, I had the requisite amount of time getting dressed, and um, and he said uh, uh, that I look like a flight attendant. <laughs> but here's the worst part: he was like, jet blue, <laughs> Aeroflot. Thanks. Anyway, so here's a song about what I like to do to you, whoever said that. No, this is the one we're going to do for, um, this one's dedicated to, you know, this is all arbitrary. It's just what I think they're about. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but I think this one's about Jimmy Carter. And we have, a, we have a little bit more banter about him tomorrow night. So if you want to come, you know, maybe there might be a few tickets left. But, but so we're going to do this song for Jimmy Carter tomorrow night. And Dan, my brilliant musical director, if you would, go ahead and start playing the piano. Oh yeah, I need this. Keep going, keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a sip of wine. It's very dehydrating for the voice. <laughs> you guys are still with me, right? Somehow I wound up on your bedside Till now I guess I had a free ride But now I join the queue Dead to you. One time 
chosen few That's all, that's it You got yourself disappeared The atom split And now you're back engineered You're a forgotten face Behind a beard That's it, that's all You're gone of the thankless task nearby are questions you just have to ask was every enemy bad as you made him be or were they just some gullible stooge like me, that's it, you got yourself disappeared The atom split and you got back engineered You're a forgotten face behind a beard That's it, that's all, you're gone Everyone who knew you said they'd been there too And soon enough I'd see the mill you put them through that Irish goodbye you do That's all, that's it You got yourself disappeared A curtain call At which your absence was cheap You're a forgotten face Behind a beard That's it, that's all You're gone Okay, that's it That's all You're gone I get the message that's it, that's all, you're gone! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. Thanks, Dan Lipton on the piano. Arthur Clinton, ladies and gentlemen. With Dan Lipton on the piano. I'd like to invite the 44 Charltones back to the stage. You know how it is. I would invite people to buy tickets to your show tomorrow night at, at Lincoln Center. I mean, I think there might be four or five left. So, but those there are might. good seats. They're yeah. tall stools up in the mezzanine <laughs> around kind of the back area. No, there might be. There no, might be. You it's never a beautiful know. room. There could be cancellations. It's a gorgeous room. You know, it's got that beautiful view. There's the always cancellations. There's and always there's cancellations. There's no such thing as sold out in New York City. No. You can find a way. You can always find a way. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You know how we like to end it here at 44 Charlton. I would like to invite anybody and everybody who has anything to do with this evening's show to join me on the stage for our sing-along. Come on now. Don't leave me up here alone. I invite you all. Come on, New York City Labor Aaron Markey, Union members Chorus. of Wet Food. Jason Saran, Martha Plimpton, members of the New York City Labor Chorus. I invite you all to stand up. Stand up and take the hand of the person next to you. Be that person a man, a woman, or something in between. Hold on tight and sing this song at the top of your lungs. This is how we get through the next month together. Take deep breaths. It goes something like this. Imagine there's no heaven. The words are on the screen if you need them. It's easy if you try No hell will be lost Thanks, I don't know it. <laughs>
If you will allow me, I'd like to take a minute to thank the many, many people who devote themselves monthly to this show. You can see their names on the list. Well, you know Eileen Delahunte, my producer Jennifer Sendra, my other producer Cam Tompkins. I wish they would come out here, but they're very shy. Ricardo Fernandez and Gaines Laguerre and Chase Copan. They make the sound and lights work. Nana Job on the bar. Thank you so much. Ingrid Curtis, David McLean on video. Keep going. Utsuki Otsuka and Ali Pinnell. She ran that photo booth in the other room. Please use it. And now let's go to the bridge and sing this one more time and really let her rip. Thank you so much. That's 44 Charleston.